Uh, hello, uh, this is a video going out to my um, mathematics class, class, yeah, MCR3U, grade 11. Um, this is regarding uh, my document, which I placed on Google Docs, uh, I think as of this morning, called What You Need to Know About Online Learning in MCR3U. And um, it starts with a bit of a reality check in that uh, uh, basically we are all thrown into this all of a sudden. So it's not like there was a full-fledged learning environment in place. That would have been impossible to expect. Um, the board is providing um, the board is providing any means that it can to make our job as easy as possible, but uh, they can only do so much. They basically, you know, they, they can't have all the material in place on, you know, maybe one or two weeks notice. I mean, these are things, these online environments are things that take months and teams of experts to put together. Um, not necessarily an expert in the subject at hand, but usually people involved in graphic arts, in HTML, in web design, in uh, video, ma video managing, software development, um, not just math. It goes beyond math. But obviously some of the people who put the content in um, would be math teachers. Uh, so it's the policies of this board uh, that um, the lessons are provided on an emergency basis. Uh, no teachers had the time to develop materials for a full-fledged uh, learning environment. Um, there are laws in place preventing even video conferencing, which might frustrate some of you. Maybe you were expecting a video conference. Well, you ain't getting it uh, this semester, probably not from any teacher. Um, and this is due to laws um, governing minors. Uh, although allowing teachers to do a pre-recorded video, such as this one, is considered okay. Uh, so I probably will give lessons uh, this way as well. Um, we all, myself included, would much rather have you people in, in our classrooms and seeing your smiling faces and God knows what and whatever, you know, uh, remarks, insights, and surprises you bring with you. And uh, in that way, I could go around, circulate around the class as you're working and uh, give you help right there, right there and then, ra rather than uh, doing it this way, which mean, which involves having you email me with whatever questions you have. Um, we're all fumbling with technical issues of uh, various levels. So uh, I could tell you a horror story from yesterday where um, I was using Adobe Premiere Elements 2019, not an old software at all, and it crashed my Windows 10 operating system four times as I was trying to make a video for you folks. And I learned my lesson. Don't use Adobe Premiere Elements 2019. So I went into Linux and um, managed to use KDE and Live, uh, which is a software on Linux, which costs nothing, by the way. Um, and uh, put put the video together that way. But for all the screw-ups, it took six hours to put together a 20-minute video. And that's the world we're living in right now. <laughs> and I'm a one-man show, meaning that I am producing my own video. There's nobody here helping me out. Okay. So I, I do have considerable computer skill. Obviously, my other courses I teach are computer science. Uh, but I don't make a daily habit of making videos, which is why I had these software issues before. Uh, you would think I would have learned my lesson earlier, but apparently, you know, Premiere Elements was pretty good earlier for other things. I'm not sure why it messed up now, but there you go. You have to take it as it is. Um, but that be, be that as it may, these will not be polished videos. They'll be one take, one edit, and... Um, since I don't have any time to be fancy, okay? I'll be using my PL managed YouTube account, not my other account. Um, so hopefully everything is above board with the school board. And if you have questions about what I did in the video, please drop me a line, drop me an email, let me know what your concerns are. I'd be happy to deal with those questions. Um, as for workload, uh, the recommended typical high school workload is supposed to be three and a half, uh, uh, sorry, three hours. Um, 
I think that's an average. That's more of a guideline. I don't think that's an exact totalitarian number that was cooked up uh, universally. Um, math and English and, you know, the, the major credit courses, the core courses, you want to spend more time on them. I would recommend at the very least three periods, which is three hours and 45 minutes. Uh, just learning, going over my lessons, going over whatever provided notes I have, and then the rest, homework, maybe another two hours. Okay. You have questions, uh, again, drop me a line. Questions regarding homework. You can't do the homework. Somehow this, you know, there, there's a crazy problem that's just driving you insane. You know, let me know. Okay. So these are just guidelines. These are just guidelines. Some days, some weeks, some weeks you'll be able to finish everything in under three hours, I'm sure. And some weeks you're going to struggle. You know, that's, that's math. Okay. So some weeks you're going to struggle and you're going to need more time. You take as much time as you think you're going to need to learn what you got to learn, okay? That's the thing. Uh, I cannot give you a limit. That's really student-dependent. It really depends on what background you have as a learner. What do you, you know, what is it that you don't know as a background to what you're supposed to know? Uh, for example, maybe adding together rational functions and rational expressions might be a hard thing for you because you couldn't add fractions. Well, you know, you might want to ask for a refresher on how to add fractions. Now, I've, I've given that already in class, but, you know, it's those sorts of things, those sorts of, those sorts of ideas. Uh, as for hardware, you need a computer. A cell phone won't cut it, okay? Um, uh, basically, uh, a, a computer, either a laptop or a PC, um, a tablet, you might be able to get by. Uh, but you know what? I would prefer if you had a separate keyboard, an actual physical keyboard, rather than the virtual keyboard, which reduces the amount of um, reduces the amount of uh, screen that you have. But your mileage may vary. Okay. Uh, but definitely, a cell phone is out of the question. That's a little too much. Or, or really not enough. And if you're in that situation where all you have is a cell phone, please let me know. Drop me a line. Tell, tell me that you lack a computer, and I will let the school know, and hopefully, in due time, they will provide you with a laptop. Okay? They're doing that to students, so, you know, take advantage. Just, uh, you know, basically, it's, it's basically if you can provide a case that uh, all you've got is a cell phone. Um, or maybe you have nothing at all. Uh, also, another big question is whether you have an internet connection as well. Um, although just about everyone um, who's contacted me said they did, so I'm not sure if that's as big an issue. Uh, for her, so um, another thing too, you need a printer. So you know, if you want to say write a test for me, you're going to have to do that at home. So you have to print out your test, write your test in your handwriting, the way you would write any test, and then scan it, and then s s upload it to Google Classroom, back to me as an attachment. Um, so you need a scanner, and you need a printer. Now maybe you don't have a scanner. It might be more reasonable that some households don't have scanners. Well, if you do, you're, you're, you're in good shape. If you don't, and you have something like this, a cell phone, well, there is a software called Adobe Scan, which is an app which runs on a cell phone. It'll run on a, it'll run on an Apple iPod, um, iPhone. It'll run on a uh, smartphone, uh, an Android. Uh, so if you lack, you know, basically, if you lack any actual hardware, let me know. A scanner, well, you've got Adobe Scan. I would prefer that you didn't take pictures. The difference with Adobe Scan is that it scans into PDF, and that way I can put comments on PDF. I can't, I can't do that with a JPEG or, or any of the graphics formats. So these are some workarounds that I would suggest. As for software, there's no special software requirement. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as long as you have a web browser, I think you're in good shape. Um, it'd be good if you had, say, Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office can be downloaded from the Peel District School Board through the BYOD website. 
So go to byod.peelschools.org and click on, give me a second, click on Office Products and then click on Downloads. Okay? So you go to your you go to your BYOD, you click on Office Products, which is next to Google for Education, and there's a uh, um, a planetary sphere thing that says downloads. So click on downloads and you can actually have your very own copy of the very latest Microsoft Office provided for you free by the Peel District School Board. Nice deal. But of course there's also Google Docs which is really another Office product that kinda does the same thing but except that it uses your web browser. Um, I just find Microsoft Office to be a lot more useful. Um, okay. Uh, another thing is, um, uh, let's see. Notes and homework. Well, uh, taking notes, I mean, if, if, if you find that I have a rather long, lengthy explanation of something, you might want to take notes on it, which means you're allowed to pause the video unlike my classroom lectures. You can pause the video, write what you know up to there, and then start the video again. Sometimes you can go back over the video and play parts of it twice, three times, as many times until you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's also, I know you all have a textbook. You should all have a textbook at home. Um, but in the event you don't, I know you're not allowed to go back to your lockers. But uh, Nelson, uh, Nelson uh, Publishers has opened their website uh, and uh, for the remainder of this year, and you can actually go to their PDFs for free. Okay? You can actually go to download their copy of Functions 11. It's a different textbook, not the same. Uh, let me know if that's your only textbook that you've got and that your other textbook is in school. Because if it's in school, you're not getting it until the year is over. <laughs> I'm sorry. But... Uh, uh, that's blame the COVID-19 pandemic for that. So uh, I give uh, in my uh, document what you need to know about learning and MCR3, online learning and MCR3U, I give the username and password for getting onto Nelson so that you can download the PDF. And it's just, you know, even if you have the McGraw-Hill textbook that we all are supposed to be using, um, it's just a good secondary resource. Um, it, it, it is a good textbook on its own. And it's a good secondary resource in case you don't like the explanation in McGraw-Hill. Um, and of course, I can be reached for questions during uh, regular school hours. But to be honest with you, you can email me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just that I'll be answering emails probably during, off, during class time. Mm, excuse me. Okay. Uh, assignments, tests, and deadlines. Um, assignments are expected, deadlines are expected to be respected, uh, just like they are in regular school. Uh, submissions for math are generally attachments of your handwritten work uh, as photographs or scans and then uploaded onto Google Classroom. And, um, and, um, and uh, also, Communication with the teacher. Well, really, there's only one kind of communication as to post your questions or concerns or troubles you're having with math uh, and email me with that. Um, as far as assignments in Tesco, everything gets uploaded to Google Classrooms in, in their Dropbox. Each assignment will have a Dropbox next to your username. You will be able to upload a PDF or a any file, really, of any format, and I will be able to see it and uh, just make sure I can see it and view it. PDF is guaranteed, okay? But please don't use a strange format that you think I won't recognize because I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write a letter back to you saying, look, resubmit this as a format that I can, um, that I can recognize. All right, so that's what I've got to say. And uh, I wish you were, I wish we were all in class and I wish we were getting back to class because this is not normal, folks. Um, we're all under stress, and um, you know we're all we're all feeling the pressure of uh, of this pandemic. And um, hopefully, just you know, respect the social distancing, and stay out of uh, stay away from those infections. 
All right. Um, so I'll be talking with you soon. Hopefully you'll be seeing my lesson on Monday.